I think there have been a there has been a fair amount of scaremongering that says that the only way we can address climate change is through drastic action that is going to increase everybody's electricity bills or ruin the kinds of vehicles they want to drive, and none of that is happening. I think it's it serves skeptics very well to point out that the predictions that the global warming activists have made are going have gone belly up. And the debate over climate change rolls on. Each week we ask you to vote in our Friday lightning round poll for your favorite panel topic. And this week you chose EPA regulations. And we're back now with our panel. So the EPA has come out with a proposal for tough pollution standards for new coal-fired power plants. And they are using as their model, uh, and this is not that, that plant, but a new power plant in Mississippi, which has begun using this technology. The problem plant operators say is it is not ready for commercial use. So, Bill, is this new proposed EPA regulation on new coal-powered plants reasonable or not? It doesn't sound too reasonable. And I would say just talking to businessmen and not simply those in the energy industry, the, the number of people who tell me the EPA is unbelievably overbearing now and is really pushing the boundaries of established law and just costing economic growth and costing jobs, uh, I'm really struck by that. Uh, EPA is one of those things that's below, below the radar. Mostly it's not legislation, it's regulations. But I think it's, I think it's a real issue out there. Chuck? Well, it is a real issue uh, for the coal-producing states, for sure. And two of them have big Senate elections this coming November, West Virginia and Mitch McConnell's home state of Kentucky. Um, he hasn't been doing too well uh, lately, but maybe one way to help him win would be to put pressure on the coal industry and have him campaign against the EPA for that reason. You know, we're actually reducing our CO2 emissions due to fracking, which was not a government program, but is really where the future lies in, in natural gas. Charles. Except that these are liberals in a hurry. You're right that natural gas is outstripping coal and might over time diminish its production. But these guys don't want to wait. They want to kill the coal. And by adopting a standard that the owner of the plant, the one that, that does the, the carbon c capture, himself says is not commercially available now, by making it the standard, the EPA is explicitly destroying the coal industry, knowing it's going to do it and doing it on purpose. Next topic, the Winter Olympics in Sochi, which officially got underway today amid a backdrop of security scares and, according to reporters, primitive living conditions. The question is, is that going to continue to be a big story, Bill, or will the competition take over? I hope the competition takes over. I feel bad for some of the athletes who are stuck in these bad living conditions. I hope the members of the International Olympic Committee who made the idiotic selection of Sochi are being stuck in the worst hotels with the worst showers and the you know, Why do six I think beds, that's not beds. what's happening? Somehow I think they're living in the single, in the best place and all the athletes are five to a room, you know. Chuck, you have written, you think that it's time for the Winter and Summer Olympics to go kaput. And this failure in Sochi shows it. I mean, you even if it had been a success, it would have been a failure in the sense it would have been a showcase for a despotic government led by Vladimir Putin. Fortunately, he's an incompetent despot, and he couldn't organize a showcase. He could only organize this mess that they have on their hands. It's not an international friendly festival. It's an armed camp of 50,000 security people to protect against threats. It's a muddy armed camp, and I think it demonstrates why the Olympics have outlived their usefulness. Charles. Uh, spoiler alert, they have a little bit of trouble, and they will tonight in the opening ceremony, as we will see it tonight, where one of the Olympic rings doesn't light up. We are so wise on the panel, we can actually see into the future. We, so we have can, uh, uh, broken the time-space continuum. Let me, let me go, because we're, we're not so wise that we can't uh, beat the clock. Winner and loser of the week, Bill. Winner, the uh, Senate Republican Conference, I think they're likely to be in the majority in 2015 because they're going to take the Senate this November. The loser, Obamacare. I do think the CBO report, which showed the job loss, added to all the health care consequences of Obamacare. Really, could be people could look back at that at a, mo at a moment when the effort to save Obamacare took a really stunning blow. Chuck? My winner of the week is the head of the CBO, Doug Elmendorf. In a city that is completely packed with lobbyists and spinmeisters, we need an honest broker. We need somebody who actually works with data and isn't afraid to say what it shows. And uh, he stood up there and reported this tough report on the health care plan and took uh, on distortions from both sides, I would say, and did a, a, a very professional job. He's my winner. My loser is Mitch McConnell because 
Uh, there's a new poll out in Kentucky that shows him trailing his Democratic challenger uh, by four points, Allison Lundergan Grimes. You know, a lot of Republicans can run against Obama uh, and hope to win on that basis. Mitch McConnell trails Obama's approval rating in his own state. And Charles. Winner is Mary Landrieu, senator from Louisiana. Tough race, and by a series of rather cynical maneuvers in which since Senator Max Baucus became the ambassador to China this week, retiring early, she gets the powerful chairmanship of the Energy Committee, and in Louisiana, energy is king. That will help us in her reelection. And your loser. Loser are Democrats who had been hoping that Republicans would remain suicidal and introduce uh, immigration legislation in the House, which would be a disaster. Instead, they wisely decided, the Republicans, they'll wait until next year, and that will help the, to focus the election on Obamacare and to pass immigration reform next year when the Republicans control the Senate so they'll get a better bill. Two votes for a Republican Senate. That's it for the panel.